Hey everyone, just wanted to give a quick update on some of the new developments that's been going on with this volcanic eruption here in Iceland. Now, a lot of people have been commenting, there's been new openings yesterday and so forth, so they were you know, saying, gotta do an update, there's a third one. Surprise, there's yet another one that has come up. And at around three o'clock last night, it became apparent that another one opened and probably formed in this sort of eruption area. It became clear on the webcams that the fourth opening is halfway between those that opened on around noon on April 5th and another one at midnight around midnight April 7th. When they were visually examining the webcams, the main lava flow seemed to merge because the lava flow that flows in Gelengendalud from the north. And, and you can see here, these red lines are the different openings that have been discovered and that, that have happened. The new cracks can open without notice. GPS measurements and satellite images were used to uh, assess changes that have taken place in the area since the new cracks have opened. There are some indications that the magma is very shallow in the area south of Gelengedalur and northeast of the eruptions, and it can't be ruled out that more eruptions may open in the next few days or weeks. I mean, we're seeing, it seems like almost every day there's a new fissure that's opening up in this area. A opening of, of, of a new fissure without visible warning could pose an extreme danger to people. And the area covered by this danger is believed to be where the magma has reached the closest to the surface or from the southwestern part of Gelengedalur. Now this map here that we're looking at defines the area in where people may be in extreme danger due to these sudden events that might occur at the eruption site. You can see here this red box is the extreme danger zone that they have outlined. Now because you know these things can open without warning there can be a sudden and rapid lava flow that is difficult to avoid outside of this area there's also other hazards associated with lava flow and gas accumulation and the map here also shows potential new hiking trail east of the danger zone and you can see here down at the bottom these two trails that they have sort of outlined in, in where people can go to more or less a little bit more safely view this eruption. Steep and high edges on the lava fields at the eruption site can be unstable. Large pieces of lava can collapse from them without warning, which can create a great amount of danger. Lava can also shoot out from under the lava rim, and that lava can travel very fast, so fast that you may not be able to outrun it. The greatest seismic activity in the last two weeks is north of the magma chamber and reaches Kelir. Just south of there, shallow earthquakes are detected and its activity is being closely monitored. Shallow earthquakes, they say, can be a sign that magma is looking to get to the surface and so it can't be ruled out that magma will reach the surface north of the magma chamber that reaches Kelir area. It is likely that with increased lava flow, gas pollution will also increase. And we're going to take a look at a map of the gas pollution that that has been made available. The initial measurements indicate that the lava flow increased further with the opening of the last eruption fissures, but more accurate measurements are expected very soon, perhaps even later today. Lava flows from all of these cracks and goes down into Merdalur and Gelingedalur. With the opening of more fissures and increased lava flow, it can be assumed that the amount of gas from the eruption sites has increased compared to what it was when there was only the eruptions that occurred in Gelingedalur. Heavy pollution is detected around the eruptions, but outside of it, it rapidly decreases, obviously. Two gas meters have been installed, though. One at walkway A, which is down here on the bottom, you can see, and the other in Meldalur to get a clearer picture of the gas pollution closest to the eruption sites. So let's take a look at that gas pollution. But before we actually jump into that, let me show you here on the webcam. Here's a screenshot. This is the new opening that had occurred. And you can see the timestamp here. And this is a screenshot from the MBF live stream. If you were watching at 5.45 in the morning, you would have seen this. But there it is right there you can see in between all of the other openings so now that we've taken a look at that let's take a look at some gas pollution we can see here a map if we hit play 
you can see exactly how much pollution is expected in the area. You can see the time down here at the bottom. You can see it's April 10th, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. It's using military time. And it's interesting to note that some of this pollution is going up towards the Reykjavik area. You can see, if we sort of pause and just rewind a little bit, it's going up, you know, you can see the legend here. We zoom out. Reykjavik is here. So all of this pollution is actually going quite a distance. And so I think that they're going to say to the people in Reykjavik and people in the area of the gas pollution to be very careful with the air quality that's in the area for them. It's amazing to me how far this gas pollution can actually go and the strong winds that Iceland is at times known for definitely don't help things. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this, I'll put a link to the other map as well, this one here, so you can take a better look at exactly where everything is. Unfortunately, it's all in Icelandic. I mean, it is provided by Hauskuli Eastlands and then the Meteorological Office here in Iceland. So there's a lot of information from them on those sites if you do want to check it out. But I'll put a link to this map and I'll put a link to the gas forecast and the air quality levels that could come up. So I hope you enjoyed this. There's a lot of new fissures coming up. It's exciting. It's also kind of scary because, you know, I've, I've been to the eruption site a few times now and I have walked within this danger zone. So the idea that I could have been in, in sort of this immediate danger now with what they're saying uh, is a little bit, is a little bit scary. So something for me to think about should i decide to go back when the weather gets better i think i'm gonna wait a couple days see if this settles down before i go back but uh yeah i mean again they always say you know the floor is lava in this case it's sort of this entire area that is now full of lava at any point so if you're going there please be careful take a look at the map follow all the safety advice that is given i know that today they were saying that if you're going to go there this morning, go at your own risk. It is very dangerous to go right now because they are still evaluating the situation. So that's it for the update. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit like, put in some comments if you have any feedback or any corrections that I need to make because I'm not always 100% on everything. Again, I'm not specialized in any of this volcano or eruption stuff. So if you are, please provide more information into the comments. I know a lot of people read that and enjoy being more informed on what's going on. So until next time, thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed it.